What's going on, everyone? Juice Bags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. Uh, we are here on Chaos 9, Ember Mount Volcano, running it solo here. Now, I I've had a lot of people asking me for this video. Uh, I didn't intend to make one, and I'm not a big fan of this map. I feel like it's got some real, real false difficulty in it with the damage shield on the boss. Uh, it takes away a lot of the strategic value. And personally, I just don't find the map very fun to run. Uh, you know, it's a map I've already done in Dungeon Defenders Eternity and in Dungeon Defenders. And now we get to do it in Dungeon Defenders 2 as well, which is just not as exciting for me as I'd like to think it is. Now, I am going to do a kind of a modified version of Harambe DD2's build that he's been showing off. Uh, Harambe does stream over on Twitch uh, DD2 quite often. I'll put a link to his channel down in the description below. Make sure to head on over there and show him some love and check him out. Now, we are going to be focusing on... What? What are we going to be focusing on? <laughs> we are going to be focusing on the Countess and the Dragon's Nest. Uh, this is the same build I was using the other day. It's my old Flame Armor Relic, Mass Destruction, Destruction, and Dragon's Haste. Uh, this is a larger map, so Dragon's Haste really helps out uh, allowing those dragons to get around the map. Now, additionally, we're going to throw down an obelisk. Um, only thing that matters on this obelisk, you see I've got uh, a super old, old uh, relic that I just don't use anymore here. Uh, the only thing that matters is Empowering Blasphemy. You're going to want to put one upgrade on the obelisk just to get that hero buff shield. Uh, nothing else matters, uh, just Empowering Blasphemy. Now we're going to be using some Proton Beams, uh, regular old Proton setup. Uh, I've got Destructive Pylon on there, although it will really will go unused at this point. The main thing here is we're getting Poison Damage. We're going to get a little Earth Damage from Shattering Torpedo on Reflect Beams. Uh, I've got Vicious on there. Remember, you don't have to upgrade your Vicious all the way to hit max range. And then just a Destruction Shard as, you know, why not get a little extra damage. We're going to use a buff beam as well. Destruction, boosted beam, vampiric uh, empowerment, diverse power servo, power servo, and diverse crit damage servo. And then on the monk, here is another one that is important and a shard that we never, ever use. That is empowering aura. Empowering aura is going to give us a 25% damage buff. Just good stuff. Uh, use empowering aura. You're not using your flame aura for damage at all. So nothing else really matters other than getting some range on it to make sure you're always going to be inside of that aura. And um, the boost aura, power, diverse power, and a defense range. So as you see, this boost aura, aura is Chaos 9, uh, as I had at Chaos 9 just from doing Chaos 8 maps. Uh, however, I don't have it min-maxed. I got defense range on it as I like to use my boost aura for crowd control. We're not using our boost aura for crowd control here, so... This is a not min-max build. Uh, I am using Destruction, Mass Destruction, and a Boosted Power on it. Now to start things off, this is where you spawn in. And this is also where you're going to fight the big Flamey Bird. So we're going to start things off by going with a Flame Aura. So we get that damage buff right there. We're going to go with an Obelisk. We're just going to slap it anywhere. I'm going to put it, say, right there. And then what else? We need a Dryad as well. Let's go ahead and get a Dryad here for a World Tree. Now the World Tree is going to help keep you alive and give you a little bit more um, uh, crit. So let's go ahead and slap that World Tree down right there. And then we are all done for the boss fight. So remember, one upgrade on the Obelisk. Do not upgrade it more than that or as it will just lower your chance of getting the buff. A um, couple of upgrades on your tree because just why not? Now let's head on down to the core here, and we are going to need to protect these cores, no doubt. Uh, starting off with this one, we're going to have enemies coming from this point on this side, and this point on this side. So we need to get a Reflect Beam protecting both of those points without suspending a ton of DU. So I'm going to just go as close as I can to the core here. Um, actually, I'm not all the way in as close as I can, but damn near. Uh, and we're just going to go with the two additional nodes. So a three node uh, reflect beam. As you see, it's sticking out here quite a bit. Uh, should still be fine. Uh, actually, it's a little sketch. Let me pull it out just a little bit more, just to be safe. Uh, we're going to put our reflect beam. Let's look at this angle again and uh, take a little trip here because my feet are cold. It's the winter and I'm going to dip them in the lava here for a second. But after we get that done, 
let's uh, go ahead and finish up with what we were doing here. So, wrong core, let's head over here. And uh, once again, look at your lanes. You know, you're coming from this lane, so you need this side protected. So, let's just go uh, something, say, like that, and then over. Uh, still sticking out a little bit, but not quite as bad. Now, on this one, what do we have got? We've got them coming from this way, so we need to protect up to that corner. And on the back side, we've got them coming from this way. Now, additionally, there is going to be flyers dipping in from behind, so we're going to want to protect those three corners. So I'm going to head over here, uh, as this is the farthest side this way, and we'll start off right here. Here I am going to hug the core uh, pretty darn close as we are going to get a full uh, beam set up right here, just right around to get hit all of those angles. Now let's go ahead and head back over here. Now, uh, we're, I like to start off putting down my buff beam, as it allows me to get the buff beam as close as I can to the core. And then, uh, eh, let's go stay down this lane. So uh, just picking a lane, just going to stretch the buff beam out to its maximum, just because, why not? And then what next? Well, let's flip over to our Countess. And uh, now we're going to start off with three Dragon's Nest. You're going to want to make sure you're putting these close enough together where you're still picking up the buff beam, which uh, if you spread them apart too far, you're not going to get that benefit. So double check, make sure you uh, do indeed have them close enough. And they're all getting the buff. And then we're going to switch over to our boost aura. I uh, forgot to mention the lightning strike aura. We are going to use uh, destructive pylon on this. And I've just got destructive pylon sitting on an LSA. Nothing else matters. It's only there to buff the defenses. Uh, we're going to swap back over to our countess. And we're going to go three more. Now this side of the map is the easier side to deal with. So it's only going to get six dragon's nests. Uh, the other side is a little tougher to deal with, so it's going to get seven. We're going to get a bonus one over there. Uh, once again, check in and making sure, see, like, that one is not close enough, so it's not getting the buff. We're going to have to get it in there a little bit closer, and uh, then make sure we are getting that buff beam buff. Still not getting it. There it goes. All right, we got it now. So we are good for that side. Now, as I mentioned over here on this lane, we're going to go seven of those Flappy Birds. So let's see. Where do we want to go? Let's just, uh, do we want to go down the middle right here? I don't think it really matters, to be honest. Uh, just having lots of room to place everything. Let's just go down this lane as it gives us lots and lots of room. Uh, once again, we're going to go in right up underneath the crystal. Slap our buff beam down first. Pop on over to our Countess. Uh, we're going to get our three dragon's nest down, making sure, once again, get them all close enough where they're all going to get the buff. So let's check. We're getting it there. We're getting it there. And we're getting it there. Now here we're going to go seven of these dragon's nests. So let's just go ahead and slap our next one down right there in the middle. And then swap on over to our monk. We're going to be able to go ahead and drop our boost aura here. And our... Lightning Strike are there. Back over to the Countess, and let's get the rest of those Dragon's Nests down. So we got, uh, what? Can we get it in? Just getting, once again, as close as possible. So checking it out here. And they're all getting the buff. Okay, so now we got 290 DU left. Well, what do we want to do? We want to do some Last Resort. So we're going to Poison Proton, uh, Reflect Beam it out here to get our Last Resort in. Now here I like to save DU as well. We're just going to go across the lane and uh, we'll save another 10 right here uh, by getting that down. Actually, that's going to save us 20, isn't it? Because that was 40 DU uh, versus placing it fresh. So that's a nice uh, little bit of DU savings right there. And then a Reflect Beam right behind it. So uh, let's go ahead and get those in. This is going to give us that Last Resort Petrify. Um, ideally, your Wyverns are already dead by now. And this is just any other mobs that make it here. Now, remember, the Reflect Beam's not there for the damage. It's just there for the Petrify. So, uh, yeah, this is not a return to glory for the Reflect Beam by any means. Uh, let's see here... 
Let's go ahead and drop that one down, and then right over here. Um, how do we want to go with this one? I guess it just doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we'll get that reflect beam in. And now we've got 10 DU left over. Kind of do what you want. Uh, we're going to be DPSing on our monk. So this is the regular old nuke monk. Uh, I am using the Ring of Earth. Uh, I'm using the Ring of Earth mainly uh, because I like having the earth damage. It combines really, really nicely with Venomous Strikes. And additionally, it gives you that 20% reduction of damage taken, which is huge in this fight. Uh, I'm going with Drago just to make it go a little bit quicker. If you're having a problem with Assassins, uh, of course, use yourself a Sparkle Party, but the map will take a little bit longer to run. And then, of course, going with the Snake Armor. Uh, additional damage reduction, plus more health. Uh, you can go a Ring of Regen, and that's going to take away that damage reduction, but it's going to give you a huge health boost, plus a heal over time. Um, I like to go with that one, though, and then on the weapon, of course, the only thing that matters is Focused Power. Uh, focused Power saves the day. I've got Frostfire Remnants on there just because it's badass, and Runaway Minecart for absolute nothing but memes. So let's just go ahead and let it fly. It's going to be pretty slow going and boring through the majority of the map running. Uh, the only time you're really going to have to jump down and do anything at all is against uh, Siege Rollers. So, you know, obviously, if a Siege Roller's coming in hot, it could be a problem. Uh, I'm going to DPS on the Monk, though. You guys know I love my Monk DPS. Um, as I mentioned, I'm just not a massive fan of this particular map. Now, it does have best-in-slot weapons for ranged heroes. However, it doesn't really have anything I'm interested in. You know, I mainly DPS on my Monk. Uh, it doesn't have anything I really care about for the Monk. So, I've already got my Ring of Fire uh, just to have it. Of course, that I'm not interested in as either really it's my least favorite of all the rings personally but uh you know of course use it if you feel like it fits your build good so uh we're just going to kind of chillax it out and let it run uh, pretty debating on jumping on forward to uh the boss fight here as this is pretty much all we're gonna do mm, yeah i think that's good enough we got 600 left let's just slap it over here because a couple of mobs were getting a little bit sketchy sketchy close um, I think the, as far as the easiest way to run this map, I, th I really think it's going to be spamming archers, and depending on your power level of archers, maybe adding in a little last minute crowd control like we're doing here. I think that would probably be the easiest way to run the map. Let me see if I can't get some Kelly on to turn around here. Yeah, it looks like he did partially. Or no, no, he didn't really. That's all right. We're not going to want to jump down when the boss comes. We're just going to want to stay straight on whooping that ass. So that's what we're going to do when it comes to boss time here. Uh, everything else, though, we are just going to let it do its thing here. Like I said, uh, very nice build uh, from from Harambe there. Um, smooth running. Smooth, smooth sailing build. Now, a map like this is where those little dragon's nests are really going to shine. As, you know, it's a big map, those have great range, and then now, with that new shard, they also have uh, some pretty darn decent movement speed. They could go faster, but they're doing alright, they're doing alright. That's the other benefit to that Earth Ring there, is you get that Petrify, if you combine it with uh, Venomous Strikes, and you get that for free. Now, the downside of it is, is you're going to stack it so fast particularly on a boss, the diminishing returns are really, really going to stack up quick. So, a little bit of extra CC. Um, really, with the rings, there's lots of options. You know, like, I have never used Piercer Servo on a monk. Uh, however, I know many, many players do. So, I think the Piercer Ring would be kind of an, an easy choice on the monk. Um, I just like this Earth Ring. You know, I like to be able to have the Petrify in there. The 20% damage reduction on top is a huge, huge bonus. Uh, no doubt about it. Keep letting them fly here. You see the tree heals me through the majority of damage there. It does really, really good. That is for a certain. Uh, we got a hundred of them left. Now, I'm not going to bother with the last wave's mana. I'm just going to leave that on the ground and get right to boss killing. But, uh, yeah, we are going to want to try to bring the pain to the boss just as quick as possible. Uh, hopefully the obelisk cooperates and gives us a nice little damage boost. 
and with everything stacked, all the damage reduction and the hero health stack that I've got going, I don't have to move at all. You can just sit here, and the phoenix can slam into you like crazy. Now, when he blows the fire out, uh, it can get a little sketch, a little sketch. But for the most part, as long as you're doing damage, um, you're going to be earning, assuming you have ancient power resets, of course, you're going to be earning a little bit of that life leech back, and then the tree is just uh, getting it done for you. So we're just about there. We got one more mob left. Where it be? There it is. It's uh, it's a little dancing stuck mob. Uh, DD2 has no bugs whatsoever. We got it, though. We got it. All right, and here we go, Mr. Birdman. I feel like more work could have got put into this boss, too. It feels to me just not the anywhere near the level of detail. You know, maybe I'm be maybe I'm wrong. I feel like the artist didn't have enough time with this boss. It doesn't feel like it's something that belongs in DD2, uh, especially with how pretty uh, DD2 is, really, uh, for the most part. So let's spray this dude's face right in. Uh, just gonna keep on pumping him. When he gets close enough, I'm gonna pop my Drago. I'm not gonna rush it, uh, but you know, Drago is always nice. Let's just keep spraying it out. Uh, keeping our hero boost up as often as possible. And uh, you go, a little tree, you go. Because you are one healing mofo. That's just good stuff, that's for sure. Now remember, every time you pop your hero boost, you're not only getting the hero boost, you're also getting another stack of focused power. So uh, good stuff there as well. Um, we got him down to 500k here. No bosses I need to worry about yet. Uh, while you're sitting here spraying, you are going to want to keep and I own the bosses that come. If a siege roller comes, you can see how fast you're burning the boss. If you're not burning them quick enough for the siege roller to make it to the core, then you're going to lose. So, definitely, definitely make sure to keep an eye out for siege rollers. I'm uh, going to continue to spam into them. We got a little bug there. Um, it's not a bug, y'all. It's an extra bird for decoration. So, uh, make sure you're shooting at the right one. Keep on working them. I think we're probably gonna get close to halfway mark here before the next round of bosses come. We got a few bosses out on the map here. He's, uh, going up. He coming down. Gonna keep spraying. Of course, you can drop your nukes in if you choose to, but I tried to no-brain this one as, as much as possible. So, I'm not even... I'm playing a nuke monk, and I'm not nuking. Uh, that alone in itself is just a problem, but I just wanted to show how, um, you know, you can burn through the map without using the optimal build or playstyle. Looks like we finally hit the halfway mark there. Um, the captain is rolling down. I ain't gonna want to watch that. Oh, we got us a siege roller. Now, here's the question. Am I gonna be able to burn him before the siege roller gets there? I don't think I'm going to be able to. I think I'm going to have to jump down and deal with that siege roller, which is a huge inconvenience. It it just really slows up the whole operation. Uh, it's going to get there, there's no doubt. I'm going to keep spraying at him here um, and see if we can't get him close. Yeah, we're just not doing enough damage to him to get him before that siege roller gets there. So, um, let's see. Siege roller's right there. Let's go ahead and get him smacked down real quick. Remember, if you die, you're going to die right on the spot where you're fighting the boss anyway. So it works out just perfect um, as far as that being the place. In fact, it may be quicker just to jump in the lava. In fact, let's do that. Let's jump in the lava. I've never jumped in the lava before, right? So let's just go ahead and jump in the lava. Uh, we'll head back up top. We got another siege roller, but I think we'll be able to get him maybe on this one. Oh, do we have two siege rollers? I got two siege rollers coming. So RNG just really, really doesn't like me at all. RNG is not my friend. I think, am I going to be able to get him? That's pretty sketch, man. Pretty sketch. I feel like I should jump down and kill those siege rollers, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to balls it out here. Hope for the best. Pray that that siege roller doesn't get all the way there. Oh, assassin comes at just the opportune time, of course. Just die off me already, assassin. 
Gonna keep spraying him. That sea driller's getting so uncomfortably close. It's right on top of the petrify though, so... I think we'll be able to get him. We'll be able to get him. Anyway, there we go. Flappy Bird down. Um, got me a daily mission complete. Heal, yes. Now, let's see. I've had terrible luck here um, on these weapons. And like I said, I'm just not overjoyed about them enough to really want to grind them out. What do we get? Um, that's not the weapon. Let's see. Let's pick some of this stuff up. Oh, it is the weapon. The Ember Scepter, upon death, return to 56% health and deal 21% more damage for 15 seconds. And it's got that Meteor 3 shot. I don't know. I might play around with that one. That one looks kind of fun. But uh, anyway, there we go, y'all. There is Ember Mount. Um, full bird. The full bird is still flying. He refuses to leave. But uh, anyway, thanks a ton. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you next time. Take it easy.